Hi, my name is Lisa O'Brien Morrison. I just want to talk a little bit about my condition. It's called the spontaneous spine, cerebrospinal fluid leak. I've been like this for two years. Um, for those of you that don't know what the condition is, which most people don't, it's quite rare. Um, I guess it's supposed to be five out of a hundred thousand people that it affects. Um, two years ago I was at work uh, with a co-worker, a friend of mine, and uh, I used to assist her in the washroom. Um, we went in one day and there was other people in there and we found ourselves in a situation where we were trying to hold our breath and plug our nose and trying not to laugh because we didn't want to embarrass the other person. And in doing so, so it would have been, you know, this type of thing, hold your mouth closed. Um, in doing so, I was straining really hard not to laugh. Um, 10 or 15, I don't know, 15 to 20 minutes later, I was getting in the car to go home and the worst headache I've ever had in my life started. It came on really quickly. It was getting progressively worse. I went home, I took some medication, went to bed, got up the next morning and thought, oh good, I thought I was getting the flu, but I didn't, I'm fine. Um, and then 10 or 15 minutes after being upright, the headache started again, it was horrible. As Soon as I laid down, within a couple minutes, it would go away. And that's how it started. It just, it was an off and on thing. As soon as I'd stand up, it would be there. When I'd lay down, it would go away. Um, now, two years later, um, it's not an immediate horrible pain the second that I stand up like it was before. Now, it's a constant pressure in my head. Um, it's, it causes headache. There's always a constant headache. There's eye pain, um, even moving my eyes around. If, if I'm talking to someone and they're not sort of straight in front of me, if they're down here or up there, the eye movement bothers me. My eyes are blurry. I have um, taste distortion. It affects my hearing. My There's like a I have the TV up really loud when I have it on. Some sounds are muffled, other sounds are super sharp and they actually hurt. I have some ear pain sometimes. I have jaw pain and jaw numbness. I usually am not up very long. It's five or ten minutes at a time. Um, I'll make a coffee or heat up some food in the microwave. Uh, every time I go to the bathroom, like all of that, those are my quick little hurry up, get it done, lay back down. I'm probably in bed, if you added all those times up that I'm up, I'm probably in bed close to 23 hours a day. I don't think I spend much more than an hour altogether being upright. The thing that is causing the pain is um, the fluid that, the cerebrospinal fluid is what your brain is sitting in, so your brain is more or less suspended in it. Because I have a leak, my brain is not sitting in the fluid, so it's more or less resting on my skull. Um, and it would be the same as, if, you know, how you have shocks in your car to help with the bouncing and stuff, I don't have that. So my brain, even to walk or if I do go in the car, like doctor's appointments and stuff like that, I lay down in the car, but still every little bump, my brain is kind of hitting against my skull. Um, and if I stay up too long, I am in severe, severe pain. Like it's not just the normal pressure pain, it's jabbing pains. Um, my face will get really flushed in my nose area and sinuses area. Um, the pain behind my eyes, I can't even, I have to close my eyes, it's just excruciating. There's nausea. Nausea is off and on all the time, whether I've been up too much or not. If I'm up too much, it's nausea, a lot of dizziness. Um, I've been having a lot of vertigo lately. Um, it has just gotten progressively worse. 
there are times I've gone weeks at a time where I couldn't even put my glasses on because the pressure has gotten so bad. If I've done things, if I've had tests done or been up too long, um, it's not always lay down and it goes away. I've had episodes where it's been, I think the longest one was five weeks that I couldn't bear anything. I was keeping my eyes closed all the time. I couldn't, I couldn't function. Um, I thought I was going to throw up all the time. There's nausea and all that stuff. And that was just because I had to have a certain test done and I, they wanted me to try to manipulate finding where the leak is in my spine. Um, it didn't work, but anyway. I guess I'm telling you this as well because I want to apologize to people. Um, I'm not on social media hardly ever. Um, just because anytime that I can read something it's usually something about my condition. I'm trying to search on the internet, on this phone. And um, like I said, I just, I can't leave the glasses on any length of time because of the pressure in my face. I do get out probably uh, sometimes it's once a month. Other times it's been once every six weeks. And when I say I get out, it's, um, I lay down in the car on the way there and back. I might get down to McAllister Place or Walmart, <laughs> Costco, and it's a huge deal. So when I do that, um, I put myself back a bit. Like I'm, I pay for it, I, I guess is the way to say it. I take extra medications. I don't feel good for the next few weeks. Like it's, it's not good, but it's, Physically, it's harder, but I need it for the emotional part every once in a while. I'm going to the States. Woohoo! Um, I've been approved by Medicare. There's one doctor in the world, one neurosurgeon in the world, that has expertise in spontaneous cerebral spinal fluid leaks. Um, He's the only one. I'm lucky that he's at least in our continent, North America. And Medicare has agreed to pay for a test and injections if I need them. Um, there's blood patches and there's fibrin glue that they can use to seal the leak if they have to. Um, I have not been approved for surgery at this point. Um, if that's the road I have to go. There's a price tag on that of close to 300,000. Um, and Medicare has said at this point that they will not cover that. So I'm not sure what's gonna happen there. Hopefully I don't need it. Hopefully it's, they do the test, they find where the leak is, they can stick some glue in me and I'm good to go. So one of the procedures that they can do is a blood patch. Um, I have had seven of those done here already. They have not worked. Um, one of the reasons may be because they don't know where the leak is. Um, they kind of thought they might have known at one point um, from one of the tests, and they did blood patches in that area, and it didn't it didn't work. Um, and then those tests were sent to a couple of different um, doctors in Canada and in the US and to the specialist that's in California and he didn't none of them saw the leak that they thought they might have seen here so I guess that's not what we're showing on that scan um, a blood patch is just they sedate you and they um, take blood out of your arm and at the same time inject it right into your spine hoping that it'll cause some sort of a little patch um, over the area where there could be a leak I'm not sure exactly yet when I'm going to California. It's Los Angeles. Um, I'm hoping not too long. Um, I'm hoping by the first of the year. Um, we, it looks like it's gonna be at least a couple weeks. His name is Dr. Shevink. I did want to put that out there too. It's spelled S-C-H-I-E V I N K. Um, he's in Los Angeles, 
and he has, if you want to Google him, he's got YouTube videos, he has written well over a hundred um, articles and papers and um, whatnot on this condition. I, um, I, I guess I just, I wanted people to know a little more about these leaks um, because it's rare, it's not well known. If you ever end up with a horrible headache that is there when you stand up and seems to get better when you lay down and it, uh, it just sort of starts on its own, then you should be checked to see if it is that kind of a leak. I know that my sister has started um, a GoFundMe page and she's doing some fundraising. I would really appreciate it if people did um, support her with that and um, if you can, I know it's a hard time of year and I don't want it to take away from other things. There's people that need help with their kids and stuff. Um, so if you can just send prayers and your thoughts and whatnot, that means the world. And um, we'll try to keep people updated as to what the progress is. Um, hopefully, I'll be sitting up and uh, giving you an update. And um, things will go back to uh, somewhat normal. This has been very humbling. Um, just talking to my husband about it last night and saying how I think there's all kinds of little lessons here in, in teachings. Um, we have pride and we have a lot of pride and I think we're not supposed to. I think that's one of the things that God doesn't want us to have too much of because um, I think reaching out to people and asking for support, whether it's financial or emotional, um, that's what we're supposed to do. So, um, easy for me to give it, hard to take it. <laughs> so I kind of always felt like I was the one that was going to be the one taking care of the people in our family. Um, we've got people in our family with disabilities that I just thought that was going to be my job one day and um, instead they're helping me so I just want to say thank you to them too.